I'm Zach. Hunting, fishing, outdoor adventure and exploration, they run in my blood. I am deeply driven. Well, we have gotten uh, the decoys hauled down to where we're going to set in. We got a little pop-up blind thingy that we're going to use too to give us just some supplemental cover. Uh, we did not throw decoys yet, so we just walked down there without waders on or anything, just because it is a long walk. So rather than have waders and haul decoys, we just hiked it down in our boots. We're going to come back to the truck anyway to sleep. Uh, we did not set decoys yet though, because that mud is going to be like thigh high. It's there's ducks here, at least as there was on Wednesday when I scouted it, um, but we're going to earn them for sure, I think. So we're going to get some sleep here for a few hours and then uh, walk in. I scouted this place on Wednesday, and the water was higher than it is now, and now it's like half an inch deep. However, one of the best hunts I've ever recorded was in these exact same conditions, during this exact same time of year, wind direction, wind speed, water depth temperature, time of year, everything, and location. One of the best I've ever recorded, so. Could be really good, but we are absolutely gonna get our exercise. We went lazy on the decoy spread. Um, so that way, you know, for one, it won't be as bad to pick up, but also we might reassess a little bit when the light comes up. Let's see what we're looking at here. So it is shooting light, but it's super, super overcast. Um, our decoy spread is terrible <laughs> because uh, that mud out there is literal concrete. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we're going to see if we can get them in with just a few decoys, wait for the light to come up and make a different plan. Mm -hmm. There we go, calm it Shoot that duck right in front of you. Huh? Shoot that duck. That one. Dang it. Got him on the third shot. You see him? Yeah, he's out there somewhere. Okay, so there's some teal on the water. Hanging out by them. Shorebirds over there. Calvin's gonna try and bust them on the water. I got one. Did you? Yep. Nice. There you go. Maybe. Let's see. He's kind of moving. Sure. He's Can. Oh, he's going belly up. Okay, what are, these? what are these? What are these? What are these? What are these? Are these shorebirds or are these teal? I can't tell. These are ducks. These are ducks. Here's one. Single? Out front. See him? In the water? Can I turn it? Yeah. Yeah, he's still got his head up. He's dead now. Here, <laughs> lightening up my pack. Are you out of shotgun shells? Yeah. Okay. I got. I'll, I'll definitely get you back on this. Oh, you're fine. Well, I mean, I'll take the shells, but I ain't pissed about it. So now we got one and two. You, you got two, and I got one now. Okay, so Calvin now has two. We shot one on the water. A group of teal that was just kind of loafing around out here. Uh, and then some more teal came in, and he shot one of those. And then I've got one from early this morning. It's uh, it's blown to the other shoreline, so I'm gonna pick that up on the way out. But I can see it right now. So we're at uh, three ducks right now. I almost feel bad for Calvin. That mud, this mud is like concrete. Like it's like if concrete was half dried. That's some of the worst stuff I've ever walked in. But I have been in those shoes before. And he wanted to go pick up his ducks, which is probably a good thing. They don't get lost that way. There's like a suction cup to it. Yeah, I guess where it's like one third of the way dry, it's just like that half dried concrete. Out there at least it's probably just normal mud. Yeah. Your foot pulls out of it when you try to. <laughs> so as you can now tell, this place is getting close to being dry. Uh, if I haven't mentioned, Iowa is in the middle of quite the drought. Um, but there are some ducks around. The nice thing is this kind of concentrates where the ducks are at. 
uh, for like the walk-in kayak hunter type of guys, this is a rough, rough year. Um, <clears throat> my big boat I don't really trust anymore to take out, so I don't know that I'm going to be doing much of that. Yeah, he does have nice green on. That is green wing teal. Is that your first green wing? Uh, I think so. The only other ducks you shot, those were the ringers last year, right? Ring necks and then the coot. Yeah, I mean, coots are... <laughs> they're a waterfowl. I don't know if they're a duck. <laughs> well, that worked out okay. We had some more ducks come in. and I'd shut my head cam off. We're just drinking coffee. Shoot this one out right out there. And then all the ducks get up and Calvin shoots another one. So, we got some ducks down. We're going to pick them up. We're going to get up out of here. So, we killed five ducks. We lost the situation with this water, I just don't like it. So we're getting up out of here leaving. Um, it was not this shallow when I scouted it on Wednesday, but now it's shallower. What's ha what has happened with those ducks were lost, where Calvin, well, unfortunately they were both Calvin, so he shot the duck, and then there's other ducks flying, so it's like, okay, hold on, just you know, hold on a second. Well, the wind is really blowing, but it's just skim water. So it's blowing the birds all the way away from us. Uh, but then, like, the mud is, like, concrete, knee-high, some of the worst stuff I've been in. So we can't really chase the ducks down. One of them, I know, got to the other side and hid in this stuff, and I had quite some time to find it, unfortunately. Uh, we Calvin and I are talking about getting a dog. We're both talking about getting a dog. Because this losing birds thing, I just, I, I hate it. I hate it. So we're leaving here, we're going to scout, we're going to make a better plan. There's a ton of birds around, but I'm so apprehensive to shoot them because I don't want them to get lost, go to waste. So, you know, this stuff is really, really difficult to pick up birds in, pick up decoys in, make it a good spread. So it was a goofy spread, but we, we got it done nonetheless, kind of. So we're going to head up out of here, get cleaned up. We're filthy. I mean, it's disgusting. Okay, so Calvin and I are going to make a shooting table out of an old wire spool. My buddy Piper is an electrician. He gets these wire spools at work that they just try and get rid of, so he's dropped a couple off for me. Um, and I saw this picture on Facebook that Justin tagged me in about how to make a shooting bench out of an old wire spool. So Calvin is kind of the MacGyver, and he's going to help me make this because I saw the idea. I thought it was cool. Uh, let me show you a picture here real quick. So that's the idea that we're going for, except I think everyone that I know is pretty much a right-handed shooter, so we probably are not going to make that right side for left-handed shooters. Probably just make the uh, left side for right-handed shooters. So make it a little easier on ourselves. So that's the idea that we're going for, except I think everyone that I know is pretty much a right-handed shooter, so we probably are not going to make that right side for left-handed shooters. Probably just make the uh, left side for right-handed shooter. So, make it a little easier on ourselves. So this little section here is going to be, we're going to cut it out of the, yeah. the top and make that the seat. So one kind of cool thing is the previous owner left us with like a bunch of scrap wood and stuff, which normally would just be junk to deal with, and we can do this all kinds of projects. Common helped to build a work bench when we first moved in, and uh, got some old scrap 4x4 here. I'm going to use about a 15 inch seat. I bet, that, I bet that'd be fine. Do six. I might do 16 and then you'll have like 2 inches on top of that. Solid. Solid enough to beat someone to death with. I'd say so. Cool. Okay, so yeah, that looks like the picture.
Good? I'd say so. Okay, so that's the shooting bench. I'm gonna go put it over where I'm planning to start making the shooting range. Uh, I'm wanting to get a hundred yards set up. I'm also have more long distance, but we've been just using this out here, out just outside the barn for like shooting clays and shooting pistols, but we're gonna get in the rifle range set up too. All right, we've got the uh, shooting bench number one done. On the fence, if we wanna do a second one right now, how much we really need two versus just having everyone share one. Uh, but we might do a second one. And we put some notches in another spool. That way, so where we shoot clays at, it's kind of nice just to have notches just to lean your gun up against, you know, when you're not shooting. Sometimes we'll have two, three, four people out. So just somewhere to actually lean a gun up. So we notch, notched right here, gun rests. So now we're gonna cut down a couple trees. Nicole and I are talking about uh, putting in more fruit trees next year. So we've already got some fruit trees on the property as I referenced in my video when I kind of did a little tour of the place. But she wants peach trees. Uh, so we're gonna take out a couple of trees here, just real small ones, and uh, clear room for putting in peach trees for when spring rolls around. Finally, I uh, got our hay mode. So it's like October 17 or 18 right now. We moved in June 26. We were wanting to get it moved, like mowed, pretty, pretty soon after we moved. It's finally mowed, cut, baled, uh, everything else. So now I get to use, utilize these pastures how I want. So this is the uh, mowed pasture and baled. Um, we're gonna take out this tree right here and uh, we're gonna take out that tree right there. That one there blocks our view some. We're also gonna probably put a fruit tree just over to the right of that. Um, and then next year we're gonna, like I said, have a couple of peach trees in here and our garden will be out here as well. So, yeah, now we can actually use this pasture. But I've also wanted to do a big like brush burn pile kind of thing. And that's gonna be in that back corner of the pasture. And now with the hay out, I can finally start making that burn pile. And I've got like little tree projects that have scattered about the place, like that tree trim right there, uh, that have been waiting to get burned up. So we're gonna collect that stuff, cut these trees down, and make the little burn pile over there. Instead of cutting those things up and keeping them into the bed of a truck or something like that, we're just gonna put toe straps on them, drag those little down trees over to where I proposed the burn pile to be, and uh, unhook. So that's what we're gonna do. Through. 
Okay, I did some tree trimming on this poplar here. Uh, so I pick up those trimmings and I got uh, a few piles of mulberry up here too. My giant brush pile off of this truck. Okay, uh, we've got the brush piled up, at least for as much as we're gonna do today. I don't have that much more laying around, so uh, I'm building to establish my burn pile, which is great. So we're gonna run into town, do a couple errands, and then come back and I don't know, do whatever.